Greetings, folks, and welcome to today's show. We're kind of running a, uh, a special uh, program in uh, to uh, try to alert you to uh, the fact that the country is headed into a potentially disastrous financial situation at the end of December if we don't do something. And unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any uh, grassroots uh, support or interest in this thing, and uh, yet it's, uh, it's going to hit all of us. So we want to talk to you a little about that, and uh, my guest this morning is uh, Steve Cope, and uh, most of you remember Steve as a former mayor of uh, Tullahoma, and uh, he's an officer in a, uh, in a small business concern, and uh, is also, I think, just assumed the presidency of the Arnold Support Counter, or is that still coming up? No, that was in October. In October, the Arnold yeah. Support Council. So. Uh, well, with that, uh, Steve, thanks. Uh, welcome, and thanks for agreeing to join us. Thank you, Tom. And uh, I'm trying to figure out uh, how we got here, or do we? Uh, how do we generate some support, some activity? <laughs> you got a, you got an idea? Well, I, I think we've uh, we've all seen this coming for a long time. It's. Uh, the fights that go on in in our national government uh, just cause stalemate, and the the sides are not working together very well, and they keep trying different tricks to solve the problem, and you know the, the tricks won't do it. Tricks uh, haven't been too successful <laughs> as we have seen. It's yeah. uh, you know this commission that was set set out to solve the problem, didn't solve it, and the special committee that uh, was put together didn't solve it, and, uh, you know, it, it just continues to, to bubble up, and with no one really offering the, the real solution that can be agreed upon by both sides. Uh, well, the both sides kind of need to learn how to give up a little bit and get in the middle somewhere. Well, with that, folks, let's take a short commercial break, and we'll come back and go some more. The highest standard of trust offers a sense of safety and comfort. It's established over time. You know when you see it. You know when you feel it. There's a standard of trust in healthcare. It's the Joint Commission Gold Seal of Approval. In 2003, Life Care Center of Tullahoma voluntarily achieved this accreditation and maintains it still today. Life Care, meeting a higher standard because residents matter most. This is J.D. Oliver here at the Smokehouse on Mont Eagle Mountain. My sisters Betsy, Nancy, and I'd like to thank you for supporting our family business for over 50 years. Hello, this is Stella Parton, and I am standing here right in the middle of Jim Oliver's Smokehouse Restaurant. But you need to come in here. We just got through doing a show. We also have a music scene going on here, and I want to invite you to come down because it is your mountain destination. Music on the mountain in Mont Eagle, Tennessee. My name's Betsy Oliver. I'm the kitchen manager here. We serve a lot of ribs and barbecue and fried chicken. Hey, this is Sean Mayer, and I just want to let everybody know to stop in at the Smokehouse if you're ever on your way to Chattanooga or Nashville. They not only have a great gift shop, awesome food, great entertainment on Saturday nights, but beautiful cabins to stay in. Check it out. Make the Smokehouse your mountain getaway destination. Stay in one of our 84 lodge rooms and 20 timber frame log cabins. Look around our trading posts and eat in our delicious restaurant. Enjoy music on the mountain every Saturday night featuring the best of Nashville. Our family hopes to see you this year at Jim Oliver Smokehouse. Greetings, folks, and uh, we're talking today with uh, Steve Cope, and uh, we want to try to uh, energize you a little bit on the, uh, on the fiscal cliff that we're facing. And... Uh, I don't, Steve and I don't pretend to have uh, the answers uh, for all of this. What we want to do is just discuss it and, and make you see, get you to see some of the implications and uh, because we're all going to be affected, uh, everybody. Uh, you recall that the, the, uh, the Congress and the, and the administration have been wrangling over a budget uh, uh, situation for at least three years. Uh, 
And meanwhile, we have run up a horrendous uh, debt uh, that nobody can quite figure out how we're going to pay that's being passed on to our kids. And uh, even in 2010, uh, the president appointed a special commission that's called, uh, Steve mentioned it, the, it's called the, Steve, the uh, Simpson uh, Bowles Commission, and they had a, what everybody seemed to think was a pretty sensible approach to fixing this, uh, although it did step on the, ex the ideological extremes. And anyway, the president had set up the commission, but then he politely ignored it, and the Congress ignored it. And so that didn't solve it either. So it, in order to give themselves an incentive to solve it, last year they passed the two, 2011 Budget Control Act. And that was meant to be so ugly that it would force them to come to terms with this and fix it on some sort of a sensible basis. Well, that, uh, that fiscal cliff is coming up at the end of December. And we've been talking about uh, this for years, and yet now we've got three weeks to fix it. Uh, so I don't know, it's tough to understand what happened. But our purpose this morning is to try to get you stirred up enough that you'll contact your congressman or senator and, uh, and make sure they understand this, this needs to be fixed. Um, well, at the end of the year, there are automatic uh, there are big automatic increases in the taxes and also a big uh, automatic uh, cut in, uh, in federal spending in a major way. Um, and uh, we want to uh, talk about that a little bit. As I say, we don't have the answers, but I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Steve? What are, we, what are we looking at? Do you have any idea this thing will be fixed by the end of, the, the end of December? I think there will be some fixes attempted uh, you know if 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 the tax cuts that have been in effect for a few years now go away then it's going to affect individuals it's going to affect companies because of the payroll tax um, you know we're all going to get hit two percent on our earnings uh, companies are going to uh, to get hit once again. If the uh, Bush tax cuts go away, then we're going to get hit. I mean, every family is going to feel that one. Um, unemployment, you know, those uh, benefits have been extended and extended and, and, and maybe, you know, while that will be a hardship, uh, you know, oftentimes it's a disincentive when you've got so many weeks of unemployment, you've got time to uh, maybe you don't want to get out and look for the, the job of choice. So maybe it forces that, that to get back into the, to the mix again. But the sequestration yeah. thing is, uh, in my view, the, that's the, really the, the sword of, uh, of Damocles. Damocles that's going to catch us. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if all this extra tax revenue comes in that they're talking about when all these tax reliefs go away, then I, I'm not sure what they're going to do with that extra money because we haven't done much of, of driving down the deficit. Even, I mean, they just keep borrowing and spending. So it, it's... It, it's not encouraging from that standpoint, but when you start talking about the cuts in defense that we're talking about, it's going to—it's really going to affect our ability to protect, for the long term, this country. Yeah, they uh, well, some numbers, for example, that, that uh, there's going to be a six hundred billion dollars a year uh, impact on uh, on uh, the on the go on the federal government which amounted to $6.1 trillion uh, in over 10 years. And uh, we could expect a, uh, uh, I've seen numbers like a 4% a, a uh, hit on the gross uh, national budget. The, the measure that we use to see how the whole country is doing uh, was going to go take a 4% hit. Uh, unemployment is probably going to get at least a 1% increase and uh, the country is 
We've, we've been in a very little growth period for the last uh, year or two. The recession theoretically ended. Uh, but if this thing goes into effect, we're going to be back in a recession for sure. And uh, in view of the experience we've had this one, I don't know how long it would take us to get out of that. Um, it's, it's just uh, phenomenal. Uh, you mentioned uh, the, uh, the defense cut. I think that's important for everybody to understand that by far the biggest hit coming out of this is going to take place uh, in the Department of Defense. And uh, that, of course, uh, depending on how it goes, is, uh, has the potential for being a, uh, a very close uh, impact for those of us in this uh, area who depend uh, so much on the uh, Arnold Engineering Development Center. And we might talk a minute about that, uh, Steve. We, uh, I know nobody knows at the moment what the impact is going to be, but uh, how, how can it help but affect them? Uh, what do you what do you think's uh, happening out there or likely to happen? Well, certainly I I can't speak for Arnold Air Force uh, Base, but I do know that the test load for 2013 is supposedly in pretty good shape. Right. Uh, the problem that that we've seen over the last few years at Arnold, though, is there's two different types of budgets. One is a direct uh, budget authority. The other is reimbursable budget authority. And when a company like Boeing or Pratt Whitney or you know, Rolls Royce or any of those companies come in to test, many times they're they're working with with reimbursable dollars, which offsets the direct budget authority of Arnold Center. But when those dollars start being cut, then it it affects your ability to maintain the facilities. So there's a there's a give and take there, but I, I think the big change you would see at Arnold probably would be 2014 budget, yeah. not 2013. But again, you know, I think there's going to be a, a clarity by the time we go through the end of this year with, with the cuts that are looming uh, there will be a clarity to how that's going to be affected for 14 by probably spring. Yeah, and uh, we uh, we probably going to see some short-term uh, effects, uh, uh, as you mentioned, probably in 14. Although we don't know, could could start happening next year. Uh, but beyond that, uh, DOD is already in the process of reducing the number of new programs that are coming along, and this will make it a, a whole lot worse. I don't imagine there'll be anything started uh, while, while this is in effect. Uh, so we're looking, as far as AED is concerned, AEDC is concerned, down the road, if there are no new f flying machines coming along, then I've got to have anything to test. Well, that's not necessarily the case. What What's happening is, I think what you're going to see is a change in the threat. And the threat's going to be in hypersonic vehicle, uh, and that's where the testing, I think, is going to increase. Uh, when you've got some of our enemies like Iran that have the capability or developing capability of firing longer range missiles, then they're doing those at higher speeds, you've got to be able to intercept those at higher speeds. So that hypervelocity, uh, you know, I think the consensus within people who are in that business is that's probably going to be a, a, the next issue of being able to intercept those missiles. And, and by the way, you've got to be able to fire hypersonic missiles back at them. Uh, to cut down on the reaction time. So I think from that standpoint, you're still going to have issues with some of the programs that are ongoing, you know, like the F-22 and the, and the Joint Strike Fighter and some of the other ones. You're, you're always going to have things that need to be tested on a recurring basis. Uh, NASA is, is getting some wind under its wings now with some of the things that are going on, and the, the base does a lot of work for NASA testing, yeah, you know, like space the, space work rather you know, than Mars uh, airplanes, yeah. flight. Uh, there will be a replacement shuttle type uh, vehicle 
all of those things are going to be tested at Arnold. They yeah. always have been. Well, okay, with that, folks, uh, let's take a short commercial break and we'll come back and talk some more. Hi, Grandma. It's Jake. I'm, I'm calling to tell you, you I love you more than anything in the whole wide world, even ice cream. I love you more than spaghetti and meatballs. I love you more than snakes and monkeys and sharks mm -hmm. and whales and praying mantises. Uh, bye, Grandma. Love you. Let it all in with Charter Phone, including unlimited local and long-distance calls. We're back, folks, and we're talking today with uh, Steve Cope. And uh, between us, uh, we're, we're just trying to alert you to the uh, potential uh, impact on the, on the whole country at the end of December if the, if the Congress and the administration don't get busy and, and fix this uh, bill that's scheduled to take effect the end of December. Commonly referred to as the fiscal cliff, and you'll also see that here the term sequestration uh, mentioned in connection with uh, uh, the uh, the mandatory cuts there, and uh, so we were talking a little bit about the uh, uh, the impact of that. Uh, we one of the major uh, budgets to be hit is going to be the Defense Department, and uh, sooner or later that's going to that's going to reach us. Uh, <coughs> uh, Steve, did, I don't know. Did you uh, did we finish that? Did you have any any more thoughts on? Uh, now, I, I think that when you look at the makeup of Arnold Center and you look at the amount of investment the government has made there, it's not something that you can pick up and move like some of the, uh, the BRAC uh, positions, you know, where you're just moving people. You know, the, we saw a big influx in Huntsville over the past five years of moving the Army Materiel Command out of the the Washington area into Huntsville. They ran uh, Space and Missile Defense uh, headquarters to Huntsville. Those were typically just taking people that are in those northeast areas and moving them to Huntsville. If you started moving test facilities, that's a whole different oh, yeah. uh, problem. And I don't see that happening. I mean, it's, it would have to really get bad for that something like that to, to happen. The danger in my view is not supporting from a maintenance standpoint to the to the tune of you get to the point that you start closing facilities and and lower the number of facilities you have to maintain. Uh, they call it mothballing in some cases. Sometimes they finally just close them but they mothball them, keep them in a minimum maintenance state until someone really has a test need. Uh, and Arnold has seen that. It is very expensive to put it back on, in it, shape. You have to bring it if back possible. and yeah. do a lot of uh, troubleshooting to get it back to where you can use it. But, you know, with the amount of expertise at Arnold, uh, I can't see them uh, reducing that and bracking it and taking it somewhere else. No. Well, that that would be a money problem all by itself, yeah. you know, to, to uh, move those test facilities. You're looking at some more more billions. Well, they've, I've seen a number thrown around that uh, uh, that there are going to be a thousand government programs uh, adversely affected by this. Uh, one of the comments, and I don't think I'd heard this before, and I haven't heard anything out of the medical community, that there's going to be uh, on the Medicare side a 30 percent reduction in the payments to doctors direct and I'm kind of amazed that we haven't been hearing more out of the American Medical Association uh, over that possibility that doesn't sit well at all but education is going to be impacted 
Uh, and we're now increasingly getting, uh, depending on more money from the uh, federal government. Uh, that's going to go away. Uh, there's going to be uh, research programs cut. And uh, so is they, they really, when it comes down to it, there's, there's just flat none of us that are going to be exempt from getting hit on this one way or the other. Tax increase, uh, unemployment increase, uh, and so forth. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the, uh, the practical problems in the business world. Uh, I, I just saw a short summary the other day, I think, which I think came out of the National Chamber of Commerce, that it's, things are so uncertain business can't plan. If they don't plan, they don't invest. If they don't invest, they don't make jobs. And that's kind of a summary for a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of impact. What, uh, and you're in the business world, what, is, what does that sound like? Well, the, the businesses that I've been associated with over the years have not made it policy to look at the political side of the world to decide whether to invest or not. Uh, you know, if you're an optimist, you're going to look around and, and see sunshine and the opportunities and what can happen. If you're a pessimist, you're probably going to sit on your money and, and wait to see. Uh, but, you know, our company is growing. Uh, we are, are not sitting on cash. We're, we're investing. We're doing R&D internally. We're investing in our employees. Uh, and, and from that standpoint, I think a lot of companies are like that. But there are those out there, probably the larger ones that are looking at how to, to you know, broaden their, their uh, entire corporate structure that may be looking at things like Obamacare and what that's going to cost in the future and what it's going to cost them before they start investing in new operations. But over the, uh, uh, over the last year or more that we theoretically have got come, have have ended the recession and started a little bit on the growth still is the business world the, the big companies are still sitting out there on a pot full of money they have over the last year 15 months year and a half they have not been spending so uh something's going on uh well there is a lot of uncertainty i mean there's no question uh and we've We've just gone through a presidential election where, you know, there was rhetoric from both sides of what's going to happen, what could happen. And I, I think that's hopefully going to calm down now. And people will look at, at once this sequestration thing is solved. Uh, you know, those kinds of uncertainties with this physical cliff sitting there, you know, it. Uh, I just can't see people waiting longer than spring to, to start making those growth decisions. If, if, they, if we get off of the fiscal cliff. We'll uh, be off by the end of the year or, or we'll know when the next one's coming. Yeah. <laughs> they postpone it. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. I just saw, uh, we all are perfectly aware that the uh, national government has been in a gridlock situation for years. I just saw this, some numbers this morning. Uh, we've got more females in the Congress. Uh, we've got uh, the uh, Republicans lost a little, lost uh, several seats in both the, con the Senate and the House, although they still have the control of the House. And uh, that included in that was the fact that a whole bunch of sort of uh, centrist, those that are willing to come together in the middle, have not been reelected, so uh, it almost sounded like that the chances of gridlock are going to be worse <laughs> instead of better. Uh, well, one uh, one quick message. Maybe you've got less lean on your Republican uh, or your thoughts on uh, on the party situation. Uh, did the uh, did the Republicans get any messages out of the last election? I. That's a good question. I. I'm not sure I have the answer to that. I, I was amazed at how the election finally came out. You know, the, we've gone through this gridlock now for two years of Congress and Senate and the president 
not being able to get, you know, working together to get a majority to do something that could solve all the problems that we've got. But yet, as you mentioned, the House is still controlled by Republicans, the Senate is still controlled by the, the Dem uh, Democrats. Democrats and the and the Democratic president was elected. So maybe the, the, the people who are voting like to see that that head butting and it, it's they're so extreme and, and I, I don't know. I, they're, they're about Smarter to see people the than I haven't been able really. to figure that one out. Yeah. <laughs> well, with that, folks, uh, guess what? We've run out of time, and uh, we need to take a short commercial and uh, come back to wrap up. Mark, you've won just about everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room at Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay him a visit. <laughs> ER Extra at Harton Regional Medical Center. <laughs> ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. We're back, folks, and we've been talking today with uh, Steve Cope, and the two of us uh, have been talking about the uh, the potential disaster uh, staring us in the, in the country from a financial standpoint, which will affect everybody. Tax cuts, uh, programs cut, or tax increases, rather, programs cut, and uh, it's going to be so so major that we'll we'll all be affected. Nobody will escape. And our purpose today is really just to, to get you stirred up enough to contact your, uh, your congressman or senator and, uh, and urge them to, to get, get off of the dead center and fix this. Uh, so with that, Steve, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to, uh, to join us. I appreciate that. Enjoyed it, Tom. And uh, our message out there, I think, is to, uh, again, to encourage the, uh, the folks in Washington to uh, back off of the cliff. And in the process, seems like we've got to learn all over again how, how to govern. We got, uh, we got a whole bunch of folks we send up there and pay pretty good money, and we're not getting them anything out of it but sand. Nothing else comes out of the pipe but sand. So uh, again, folks, uh, it's going to be a major impact, to every, and everybody will be affected. Uh, so uh, please, by all means, uh, take some interest and get to your member in, in the Congress and uh, let's see if we can't uh, encourage them to learn how to govern. And so, Steve, thanks for joining us, and uh, we will uh, thank you for inviting us into your parlor, folks, and we will see you next time. <laughs>